I don't think I've seen this before, but if you remember, Samsung released the Galaxy Tab SX Lite back in 2020, then again in 2022, and now we've got a 2024 edition. So I'm going to take a wild guess and say this is probably the best selling tablet Samsung has ever made. Now the cost of this was just over $300. I'll leave a link down below with current pricing and more information. <laughs> Now, as far as I know, it's pretty much the same tablet as the previous two versions, but now it has an Exynos 1280 processor. One other obvious change is the redesign of the box. Not a huge deal, but it looks very similar to their other products now. It looks like it has the same 10.4 inch TFT LCD display with 1200 by 2000 resolution. It's got four gigabytes of RAM with either 64 or 128 gigabytes of storage. I was hoping the RAM would be a little bit higher, but you can also expand the storage with a micro SD card. It comes with Android 14, One UI 6.1. It also has a 7,040 milliamp hour battery with 15 watt wired charging. So almost identical specs as the previous version. Nice thing is it still comes in three different colors, rose gold, gray, and the one shown here is mint. You have the micro SD card removal tool on the bottom of the box, quick start guide and terms and conditions, USB-C to USB-C charging cable, I do like that they're color matching the S Pen. I know on some of the other tablets, they just throw in a black one. It's always a little tricky to get the plastic off the edges. The color on this definitely seems a little different than before. I think it was blue before instead of mint. I would have to go back and check. It does feel like the same exact build quality as before, where it's sort of rounded on the corners instead of boxy like the newer tablets. The nice thing is you still have a headphone jack, charging port on the opposite side, and then you have one speaker on each side. You can see the S Pen snaps on the side of the tablet. It doesn't say SX Lite on the startup screen, so you wouldn't get this confused with the 2020 version, but it's going to be pretty confusing seeing this next to the 2022 version. When setting up, you have face unlock, pin, password, and pattern. Of course, you have light and dark mode. Surprisingly, it looks like they have the same wallpaper as the last two versions, and they even include a little bit of light bleed over here on the side for me. Consider my last one has that. Even if I flip the screen, it goes to the other side. It's kind of strange. Sometimes you don't even notice it like when it's all black, but on gray, you can see it a little bit over there. And on the home screen, I assume if you change the home screen, you probably wouldn't notice it. The screen quality is probably just good enough for most things. I doubt it's gonna compare to some of the more expensive Samsung tablets, but it's not bad in person considering the price. It's also Widevine L1, so it's gonna be good for apps like Netflix, and it streams up to 1080 p resolution for YouTube videos. If you're wondering the size difference of the previous versions, it looks pretty much identical. Same size logos, style of cameras. I feel like most people would probably like to see a bigger change in the design, but the good thing is you can probably use all the same accessories from the previous versions, which is definitely nice to have in my opinion. You can see it's got the new notification shade where it groups everything together. You've got most of your typical stuff like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, power saving, location, link to Windows. It's got Dolby Atmos. It looks like it has Samsung DeX on here as well, which definitely works a little bit different now. After the previous update, now most of the windows are gonna open up in a pop-up window. And then when you minimize it, it just goes down to the taskbar. Sort of odd with Samsung DeX, you don't have the shortcuts down in the corner. To me, it's a little confusing. It's sort of the same as not having Samsung DeX on. Considering you can swipe up to access all the apps, and then you can open up the apps right over top of the apps. Yeah, that's kind of strange. Then if you exit Samsung DeX, it gets rid of the taskbar. Left of the home screen, you've got Google Discover or Samsung Free. Just like the previous versions, there's no video out, so you can't just connect an HDMI adapter to hook this up to your TV or external monitor. You would have to do that wirelessly. You can see it's pretty much the same apps as on the previous versions. You've got a handful from Samsung, Google, a few from Microsoft, and they had a couple extras like Netflix and Spotify, but it will let you uninstall those if you want. You also have the edge panel over here on the side. We can customize it to show live, people, smart select, weather, tools, reminder, clipboard, or you can add pretty much any app that's on the tablet, which I think always comes in handy. 
Of course, you're gonna have all the S Pen features on this one that you had on the previous models and most other Samsung tablets with the S Pen. The S Pen is definitely one of the best ways for taking notes, drawing, or just moving around the software. You've got stuff like Smart Select, S Pen to Text, you also have Air Actions, Probably one of the most important parts of this tablet is gonna be the improved performance over the previous version. As you can see here in the Geekman scores, the single and multi-core scores are a little higher, but the biggest jump is gonna be GPU performance. Just testing out PUBG Mobile and Asphalt 9, both of those play fairly smooth. I did notice some dropped frames here and there, turning up the settings in PUBG Mobile, but once I turned them back down to default, it seemed to play just fine. I also ran my typical battery drain test to see how this compares to the 2022 version and it lasted about seven and a half hours which is a more extreme test but it's about the same as the 2022 model so if you already have that you won't see much of an improvement as far as battery life but if you have the 2020 version it might be worth upgrading. Because the speakers are up on the top, obviously they'll be a little louder if you have them closer to you. But overall, I feel like they're probably loud enough for most things. Here's a quick sample just to give you an idea of what they sound like. It's got an eight megapixel camera on the back, five megapixel on the front. The front camera is also on the short end, just like the previous versions. Inside the camera app, you've got portrait, photo, video, and then a few extras under more like pro, food, panorama, hyperlapse. You can also shoot up to 1080p resolution, 30 frames per second for video recording. It's definitely not gonna be the best cameras out there. I would guess they're using the same exact cameras as on the previous 2022 version, which was a slight upgrade from the 2020 model. Here's a few samples of photo and video just to give you an idea of what to expect. So sort of as expected when it comes to photo and video quality, it seems very similar to the previous 2022 version, definitely better than the 2020 model. So if you need to use this for Zoom meetings or other video conference calls, this could be a good option. I would just make sure you have good lighting. I'll definitely have to compare this to a couple other tablets that have came out recently. So you'll wanna keep an eye out for those upcoming videos. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.